morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? No, I've never seen that house before. It's funny, isn't it? You sort of drive the same route every day and then somebody cuts down a hedge or clears a forest or something and there's, there's a bit of land or a house that you've never even noticed. So, I'm in a good mood this morning. We had no patients in yesterday. We're, we're pursuing this policy of sort of bunching all the patients up into a few days rather than have them all spread out like one every hour or so over the whole week. Uh, they don't care, it doesn't really make much difference to them. And it enables us to get on with other jobs. And one of the jobs that I've been meaning to do for a long time is sort out my this sort of tangled mess of um, pipes that comprises my compressor and uh, aspirator cluster. Cluster is the first half of a word which actually describes it. Um, so they, re they reported a sort of loss of suction on, uh, on one surgery. So I decided to uh, try and sort everything out. So we stripped down, funnily enough, although the suction was the problem, we couldn't really get to the suction machine properly. Oh, fuck me. He's uh, put out a road close sign. So we can just nip round that. That was a quick bit of thinking. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, so we couldn't really get to the uh, suction machines because uh, the compressors were in the way. And uh, what they've done is they put three surgeries in in fairly tight proximity. And because it's an industrial unit, we don't have like a, um, a basement or something that we can run all the pipes through the floor. So we have to have a raised floor, all the pipes run above the concrete floor and underneath the wooden floor. And they all come out the back and sort of join together at the, uh, at the drain. So let's get around these guys. obviously going to be uh, tar very tarmacking this road. They're covering up all the drain covers with that yellow tape. Uh, you have to, who dares wins you know sometimes with these roads. You're, you're, if you've got the balls to drive past a road closed sign, I mean there are people here you know there, there are houses where I'm driving past so there are uh, you know cars have to go in and out so what you've got to do is just have a bit of chutzpah and say look no I live I live just around the corner up there and they'll let you through and then you carry on driving and then at the other end you say oh I've just come from up the road there and they'll let you out you know I wouldn't recommend it but uh, the alternative to uh, the road that I'm on now is to backtrack and go completely around the other way. Looks like they've dug out all the um, eyes in the centre of the road as well. They've been quite busy, you know, quite busy overnight. There we are, we're on the new bit now. I have to be a bit, sorry, I'm concentrating because I might run, go around the corner and run into a tarmacking machine. So, <laughs> not advisable. So, yeah, so I've completely forgotten what I was talking about. I'll fast forward through this bit. I went to, um, oh, the compressors. So um, yeah, so they've they've shoehorned three uh, surgeries into the uh, space, and I only uh, I've only registered two with the CQC because we only use two, and I have uh, so I've got like a chair and a unit, a module, um, and uh, a compressor, and because the 
the three uh, surgeries were relocated and they've come from um, another location where every surgery had its own compressor and its own suction unit so anyway so one compressor has been disconnected one suction unit has been disconnected um, uh, and then that's given us a lot more space which has allowed me to uh, decide where, what's wrong with the suction and then uh, as part of that I, all the all the sort of the joints on the compressors were a bit loose possibly not leaking air but you know just not tight so um, we ended up taking the uh, superstructure on the compressors apart and uh, re retightening all the and re PTFE taping all the joints and so the compressors are really uh, in good shape now and we substituted an old compressor or the oldest of the three compressors for one of the two one of the newer ones which was sitting idle on surgery three and then uh, from two uh, compressors both of whom had a few broken parts we managed to reassemble one decent compressor and uh, so we're down to two two compressors two pumps for two surgeries and obviously a load of spares now but uh, it was nice it was a good job but uh, and then afterwards um, went to a study meeting uh, sponsored by Dent Supply Serona at uh, Leeds Castle not a good venue not a good venue I, I wouldn't Leeds Castle they use the thing called the Maiden's Tower which is like a, a, a little mini stone building right next to the front entrance of the tower uh, of the castle so you get like a, quite a good view of the front of the castle and the lawn but really not uh, anything like uh, a good venue for postgraduate you have to park it's dark the GPS takes you to um, miles away takes you to the back entrance you can't so they let you in the back entrance and then Uh, to a little car park and then then you have to walk past that like, like half a mile back past the castle in the front entrance and in and into this thing and it's not it's a wedding venue they're trying to sell it as a wedding venue it's a general purpose space it's got one toilet because they've all the, all of the space is taken up with tears and tables which they bring out for weddings um, for a postgraduate meeting for about 20 30 people you know you have to bring a projector you have to bring a screen you have to bring a laptop it's um, and the chairs are extremely uncomfortable so I think that was a poor choice of venue you know people think oh you're going to be wowed by the fact you're at Leeds Castle I'm hoping that the only reason that they went there was because it was dead cheap and they have to have security staff on overnight and providing the food is cooked in advance you know just canapes and quiches and egg tarts and stuff like that then uh, really they only need like uh, four people uh, two of which would have to be on duty anyway um, to take this booking but um, it was it was a weird meeting because you know the dentist by Serona is trying to sell their implants they're trying to and they do it by added value uh, a bit like Kent not Kent uh, not dental directory the other one Henry Shine Henry Shine you said dental directory will sell you something for a hundred pounds Henry Shine will um, sell it to you for 120 but then they'll say that they, they'll justify that by saying well you know we give you a lot more support than dental directory they're just box shifters um, and we've got a lot of added value and why don't you just give us all your data tell us tell us everything you've bought for the last 10 years off of anyone will tell you how to sort of rationalize your supply chain basically by uh, suggesting that you buy everything off of us and that information is very valuable to them you know not only does it tell them uh, about uh, patterns of uh, consumption of dental materials in the UK but it also uh, very much weakens your negotiating position because they they know what you're going to buy <laughs> so, 
who can't say, oh no, I'm not going to buy that, and say, well, you've had 10 of these every month for the last 10 years, I mean, what are you going to do, you know, it's our price or, or start shopping around and all this elaborate supply chain guff falls apart. So, dense ply, this sort of, uh, you know, getting people like Tony, uh, Ben as everyone calls him, I call him Tony because I qualified with him, everyone calls him Ben, getting him to come along and that they uh, have the obligatory, he has to say the obligatory thing like that. Dense Ply haven't paid me for this meeting this evening, so you know I'm, I, I can be entirely unbiased and independent. Having just gone on about how uh, he's been, he was sent on a freebie to Barbados to have a have a review the evidence on some computer on some implant scheme, you know, which is a well-known thing. I mean, ever since lobbying began people have been sent to on, on expensive holidays at the company's expense to consider their products and and then they come back and say no you know I'm under no obligation to be unbiased about this you know uh, uh, biased rather I'm under no obligation to be biased about this I can say what I think and, and you know no they have created an obligation that's why they do it you know why do they do it they don't do it for the fun of it and or because they've got too much money and they need to waste some they do it because it creates there's an unspoken tacit obligation that you're going to be nice to them or at least not nasty to them or you know so so please don't don't spin me that line you know it's just not incredible So anyway, so you know, I mean, he's got a bunch of uh, implant technicians and implantologists there. I was probably the only dentist who, was, I was the least experienced dentist there. Funnily enough, but I also been in practice the longest. So, and there were there were people there saying, "Oh, I've been in practice 25 years. It sort of just crept up on me." And I'm like, "Well, you wait until 35 years comes along and kicks you in the bollocks." You know, I'm at the end of this year. I'll have been qualified 30 eight years and uh, so I'm, I'm in technically I'm in my 38th year of practice so uh, these these guys are kids you know children so <laughs> anyway <laughs> so we worked out that collectively we've got a nearly four centuries of experience in of which I must have represented about 10 percent although I was a 20th of the audience and it was quite good, you know, I mean, the most useful thing for me was I was able to ask a question, which I've got, it's an actual clinical case, and uh, the inexperienced implantologist uh, came, you know, and said, look, this is what you do, you know, you, and, the, and basically it was about, I've got a, a screw abutment that's the way the screws come unscrewed, and, um, and uh, <clears throat> but it's got cement retained crowns on, and the crowns are retained with, um, with the strongest glue that you can get, of course. <laughs> um, so, what we need in implantology, I mean, if you're listening to this and you're a young practitioner, what we need is a reversible crown and, and bridge cement. Reversible, yeah? And it doesn't have to be reversible in the mouth, although being reversible in the mouth would be a big, big bonus. <coughs> Excuse me. It needs to be something where if the uh, abutment screw does come loose and the, and the thing falls out, then um, uh, then you know you can bake it in an oven or something, and it just it just crumbles and the crown comes off and and is as good as new. Or you soak it in some sort of uh, chemical solvent or something, and it and it just dissolves. Uh, so anyway, they helped me with that case, but. The problem with these meetings is that you know you you have to leave sort of half an hour early then it takes you an hour to drive there then it takes you half an hour <clears throat> to sort of park up and and in these castle case walk to the you know it's a good half a mile to the from the car park to the venue then there's a compulsory half an hour socialization and and eating which turns into 45 minutes because everybody's you know having a really good chat and they don't want to interrupt everybody so this meeting was supposed to go i was supposed to sort of 6 30 for 7 
finish at nine uh, it was didn't start till sort of uh, 7.15 and at nine o'clock when it was time to wind up they hadn't finished so they just decided to carry on and I was faced with a 20 minute walk back to the car and an, and an hour drive home again <clears throat> so I'm not really going to get home till half ten I know which I know is not massively late not massively late but bearing in mind that I had been literally on my knees in shit all day um, repairing these suction pumps and not you know I'm, my legs were aching my knees were aching my brain was aching and really I hadn't learned anything that I couldn't have learned from just picking up a textbook and flicking through the, the you know implants for dummies and that is not knowledge these days that is not how knowledge works you do not impart knowledge like that at least not to me you don't but the, the problem with these meetings is that they are social and clinical and that's because people like that you know they like people we're, we're all social monkeys aren't we we like to socialize uh, there is some value to being socialized and socializing there is some exchange of information mostly useless information gossip about who's died and uh, who's you know screen who and what you know business is like where you are which is always terrible and um, so they get they, they, they have to do all that and then they get down to the clinical side which is uh, one person talking to 20 people which is ultimately really probably what this is going to end I'm talking to 20 people now and over the lifetime of this video I, I may well talk to more than 20 people through this video and yet not one of you has had to drive anywhere that you wouldn't have had to anyway or give up any time that you didn't think was free anyway and um, and and the what I'm saying is going to live on isn't it you know it's it's always available whereas anyone who didn't come to last night's meeting there's no record of it and so uh, by not going effectively all, all that knowledge has been delivered and then has just ended up as vibrations in the paint on the walls um, which incidentally the Victorians used to think that um, if you could analyze the vibrations in the paint on the walls that you would be able to uh, recover an idea of what happened and also the light you know reflected off the walls they're working on the basis that the walls had heard and seen everything that happened in the room and so all you had to do was get the walls to talk and although the uh, the sound and the light would have had uh, an imperceptibly small effect on the walls then um, the problem was only that it was imperceptible and not that there was no effect and so if you could percept it perceive it then uh, you could for example if a murder had taken place in a room you might be able to find out who the murderer was uh, which which and that sort of morphed into the Star Trek idea of um, you know Luke, Luke uh, Picard um, you know saying oh let's let's see what happened you know let's just replay the tape and you know, let's rerun the in the hollow hollow suite let's just replay what happened and you think well how the hell what was their recording what happened you know and it's always in a third person point of view isn't it it's always the cameras looking in on them and zooming around in there and all these different angles so god knows how they must the walls must have eyes and ears in uh, in star trek so you know it was good and i made a few condo sort of got to chat to tony again at ben again and he's a uh, Oh, surgery consultant now and you know good on him why not someone's some I mean, you don't when you qualify at dental school and you look at the 50 spotty herberts that you're qualifying with you never think any of them are going to be uh, commit suicide or be consultants in oral surgery or deans of dental colleges and things like that but as as the uh, generation above us dies off all these posts become vacant and I suppose someone's got to do it uh, so he's he's an he's an old surgeon and he's very clever and the best thing about Ben is he's really down to earth as well. He's like you know he he can uh, he does a lot of clever stuff and yet he's uh, he's a bit like uh, 
you know, well, what, what, how much gap should we use? And I'm thinking, like, is this guy patronising us? You know, is he, is he being condescending? Is he trying to sort of, is he talking down to our level? And uh, no, he's not. He was talking, he's talking at our level, you know? And I think for a study club, that's probably quite a good idea. Oh dear. Right, okay, here we go. Anyway, the most useful thing for me would, would be if they set up some sort of WhatsApp group, which was dedicated to just the study club and, um, as local practitioners we could then uh, you know come to each other with our problems and, and cases and things like that because with that sort of thing you need to keep it small and local I think you need to have um, you know just the people who um, you know you, you need to know who you're asking it's all very well out saying oh well we've got an implant group it's got 2,000 members you can post any problem that you like um, but the problem is you tend to get seven answers and um, and uh, it's too anonymous, you know? Whereas I know if we formed a small study group and we kept in touch via WhatsApp, then I could say, I could say, oh, I could post something to Ian Small or, or Ben and say, look, I've got a problem, you know, can I just have your advice on this? Anyway, so today we should have, um, I, I'm going to need to uh, check the suction on the chairs because they're still saying that the, the suction's not right. I mean, we, <laughs> we found a filter on the aspirator motor that none, nobody knew existed. It's, it's quite funny in a way because it uh, has been cleaned because the filter pumps have been serviced. And so when the filter pump was serviced, it was cleaned. But, um, but it's something that, you know, if we lose, start to lose suction, it's something else we can check, you know? There's about, there's about 10 filters uh, in, between, uh, in between the suction tip and, uh, and the actual drain. left the surgery in a bit of a mess because we just finally reconnected everything yesterday and and I said and it was about four o'clock and I said no I've got to spend an evening at a postgraduate meeting there's no way I'm staying here a minute longer so we just sort of left everything and then uh, we came home so anyway so I'm gonna write a letter to this woman and um, who's got this implant problem and, and uh, you know, pretend that I know what I learned last night from everyone else, which is, which I, which I do know now. So that's been tremendously useful and uh, came at exactly the right time for her clinically. I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. I want a service where I can look at, I can have a chat with a patient, work out that they want an implant, agree a price, um, send them off for a scan, send the scan off to a, an external service, a third party service, and uh, get them to place the scan on, in the CAD CAM in 3D and just to send me back a stent and the implant and, you know, and the various bits and bobs, the uh, healing cap and everything. And then that, as far as I'm concerned, then get the patient in, get them numb, pop the stent on, drill the hole, screw the implant in, cheerio. But that doesn't exist. It exists in the States, but it doesn't exist here. It will exist here soon. So again, if you're a young dentist, you want to start a service, this is what you do. All right. Okay. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.